Hello, my name is Cal Maloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm Rachel Renner, also of Richmond, Virginia, and also an anarchist. And today we're bringing to you the news from Underground. But before we begin, I'd like to say thank you so much for your support these uh, past couple of months. Thank you so much for the donations that enabled us to buy thousands of uh, these activist yeah. pamphlets. So we have the okay. the whole set now. So collect them all. <laughs> we have the what is anarchy, the what is volunteerism, the what is peaceful parenting, and now the what is agorism. And so, of course, we'll be passing them out around here in Richmond. So stop by the Nevermore Anarchy Guard or the uh, Maplewood Anarchy oh, Guard. Oh, we're getting our own stash? Yeah, awesome. we're going to have some stash there, too. So get your swag. We'll candy in there. <laughs> and remember, the, the pamphlets complement one another. So you can drop them off anywhere. They'll give you a good view of what is the Leviathan and how to uh, achieve the ends of freedom, how to get there. And so with that, thank you again for subscribing. Thank you again for your support. And we'll continue fighting the good fight. Huzzah. Huzzah. <laughs> okay. so, so we're going to begin today with the recent call to, well, it's a um, call to ban the word bossy. And this okay, was... Okay, Charlie Brown. Yeah. <laughs> this was started by Sheryl Sandberg, Chief Operating Officer of Facebook. And she's calling for a campaign to ban the word bossy. Um... It's admirable. The only thing that's admirable about it that I found is that she's not trying to do this to the government. Uh, you know, you'll find places like Germany will they, they will ban even the mention that the Holocaust didn't exist for using air in your own lungs to to say some words that's punishable by by a sentence, I believe, a fine or going to a cage. So I mean, to the extreme of where other people go in, in lengths to try to remove words from uh, people's uh, I guess lexicon. Uh, it's, like I said, marble that she's just trying to do a voluntary campaign, trying to change social norms. As was said on Jezebel, they'll send you to girl jail. Yeah. <laughs> but it also kind of reminds me of the Ministry of Truth, where they try to uh, ban certain words that will never be used again. You know, why, why use the word bossy? Um, so, of course, her thoughts on uh, bossy is that it desensitizes uh, young girls from taking leadership positions. They feel she feels that it's a negative word that's attached to it that uh, that's labeled, I guess, specifically on two girls. You know, they, they say that the cultural is to the cultural norms is to call a girl who uh, is take charge, is proactive, to call her bossy, whereas a young child, uh, a male, for example, they call him a leader, and that's the position she takes. And she feels that it's just a detriment to, I guess, the growth and development of uh, young girls to achieving a proactive life to to ban this word, to stop using it, to stop, I guess, pretty much name-calling. I mean, she might as well just say stop name-calling each other instead of going for one specific word that caters for one gender, right? It should be all genders, regardless of, uh, you know, what's between your legs, that we shouldn't be, you know, name-calling to that specific degree, especially to children. And for the most part, what I hear that um, the aggressive tendencies of boys, and that's what they kept harping on, you know, boys are aggressive and that's okay, but... The, if I may extemporize a sort of vague psychological study thing, when they talk about the reason boys feel the need to be aggressive is because they're not taught ways to use their words. So let's ban another word, let's make them resentful, you yeah. know, take that away from them. <laughs> I mean, where do you think that if they do use these words, where do you think they pick it up from? All right? It's not like they're born with a dictionary. They're well, picking my up the playground, cues. they were using another B word, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're a very proactive sort of school. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I was, actually, I was given crap for being too verbose as a kid by my peers, by my female peers. You know, they didn't say verbose. They said, you talk too fancy or other small town bullshit like that. So, you know, this is making me particularly resentful that, you know, the almost 1984-esque removal of words would be something they think would be a good tagline for a campaign. Yeah. And maybe it's just a bad tagline, you know, because recently there have been campaigns about words like retarded and gay. And, you know, those haven't said, you know, ban it. They've just been like, there are so many wonderful alternatives. It's been like a like a Dr. Seuss book and not like a, you know, ooh, you know, iron fist. Let's, you know, wipe this from the records with yeah. our, you know, Sharpies and sashes. Yeah. Have you ever experienced anyone calling you bossy? No, no. They, they went straight for more vulgar terms. All right. Yeah. But yeah, they, girls do get crap in grade school for being too intelligent. I saw that happen to quite a few girls who were, you know, too smart. And it happens, okay? But it's stuff we move beyond. 
And I've never been called a leader when I was a kid. I've never seen a teacher call the boys leaders and girls bossy. Never seen it happen. Never actually seen a girl got, be called bossy when I was growing up. In the 12 years of my indoctrination experience in these public school settings. Oh, look where you ended up. <laughs> well, again, you know, the leaders that we need today are, are role models, right? If you want to uh, help these children and to, to achieve this lifestyle, you know, being proactive and being assertive of themselves, then you, you lead by example. You know, not by telling what you can and cannot do, right? It could, you know creating this kind of aura of um, negativity against if you ever use this word or for example curse words for example there's there's a lot of that going on where it's uh, frowned upon you know from uh, saying some words it kind of reminds me of uh, George Collins uh, the seven words you can't say on TV which is um, shit fuck piss uh, cunt motherfucker cocksucker and tits got it mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Everybody has the strangest boner now. I know, right? <laughs> so, I mean, they're, they're just words. Just, uh, I mean, again, words. I, 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 we'll, we'll talk about more about what you should be, I guess, instilling instead. But um, but you look at the website that they have. What is it called? Lean In. It's a nonprofit organization that yes, they have. I'm leaning now, everybody. Just leaning. Yeah. yeah. So, on the website, it's interesting to note, they'll have in quotes on the front page, when a little boy asserts himself, he's called a leader. Yet, when a little girl does the same, she risks being branded bossy. Words like bossy send a message, don't raise your hand, or speak up. By middle school, girls are less interested in leading than boys, a trend that continues into adulthood. Together, we can encourage the girls to lead. And of course, they have these uh, interesting, well, of course, in the settings that this is taking place is at a public school setting. So, I mean, that's the last place you would want to bring your children in if you want to instill these particular characteristic traits of um, leadership. You know? Or a select few have the monopoly on truth. Right. Yes. Yeah. And who will those future people with the monopoly on truth be? We must determine who they are so we can cull them from the herd. You know? Yeah, if you want to look at, you want to find bossy people, you'll yeah. find the bossy people in government, the people who are sending these children to go into the indoctrination camps, you know, pointing the guns at the parents. Like, if you don't send your children there, you know, you could be held for, for tourism. You can go to jail, you can go to a cage, and that child will be uh, parentless. Um, now, those, those are, I guess, the bossy people around if you want to look at them accurately, objectively. Um, so they have interesting statistics which they cite. They'll say, the confidence gap starts early between elementary and high school. Girls' self-esteem drops 3.5 times more than boys. Girls are twice as likely to boys to worry that leadership roles will make them see bossy. And then girls get less airtime in class. They are called on less and interrupted more. Well, this has nothing to do with boys at all. It has nothing to do with gender at all. That has something to do with the teachers. It has something to do with the indoctrination camps, that the settings, and the context of these experiences are taking place. Right? Don't don't look at the distractions. You know, of course, if the girl's not being called on, it has nothing to do with the uh, with the boy next to her. It has to do with the teacher. It has to do with the setting, with the environment. Question that. Stop questioning the children and thinking that they it's because they can't adapt to that. Right? Question the environment that they're sent into, forced to be into. Um, Consider that the girl might be thinking about the question longer, or not wanting the regurgitated version of the truth. Yeah. Uh, if you guys want more information, a lot of information on schoolings and the peaceful parenting pamphlet. Um, so they're interesting advocates for this. Uh, one among is Michelle Obama. So talk about bossy. <laughs> I mean, she's, she's a wife to one of the most bossiest persons in the world, you know. She, you know, she is a lawyer, essentially, you know, argumentative is how she's made her bread and butter. You know? Right, right, right. I'm not going to fault her for that. Um, oh, what's the name of the woman who heads up the Girl Scouts of America who... Oh, right. So... I forget it. Well, the Girl Scouts of America in general, they were making such great strides, you know, they were being inclusive of trans members, there was um, that great moment in anarcho-capitalism where the girl set up outside the marijuana dispensary, you know, that was... Oh, yeah, yeah. That was <laughs> it, you know? um, and now the American Heritage Girls have sprung up in protest of this, which, you know, if you want to know if you're doing something right, it's because you're pissing off those sort of people, so, yeah, I mean, I was all for the Girl Scouts. I was almost regretful that I had never joined them as a kid, you know. And then they go and they back something like this. Censorship, essentially, you know. Sweep the word under the rug rather than address it head on. Yeah, Timmy, why did you just call Sally Bossy, you know? why did What did she do to invoke that in you? No, let's just get rid of the word. Yeah, where, where did you learn existed. that from? Where did you pick that from? Yeah, right? Do you understand how this makes other people feel? Like, teach empathy. Now, that's something they don't teach in these public school settings. Um, I, I actually, uh, my mother and I, we put my, my sister, Jennifer, into uh, the Girl Scouts for about two weeks. She found it boring. I mean, she did, the campy thing was of interest, but it seems she told me that the most thing that they spent their time on was on uh, selling Girl Scout cookies. And she wasn't too ecstatic about that. She'd I mean, already been on Nature Hikes with you. That's, that's, <laughs> that's going to yeah. all seem dull. Um, yeah, it's, um, and it's not some, it's, they're not even homemade cookies. 
So it's not, uh, and, and, and now, of course, I'm not trying to bash the Girl Scouts, you know, join all these organizations that are there, you know, to promote, you know, I guess, comradeship, you know, um, group skills, um, group work, sure. But when the organization has ties to the Homeland Security of, uh, Homeland Security, of, you know, for example, they have uh, the Girl Scouts, uh, for example, the U they announced earlier, a couple of years ago, they announced a joint um, collaboration with the National Initiative developed by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to raise awareness about cybersecurity. Interesting. Janet Napolitano created a Girl Scout preparedness patch designed to engage Girl Scouts and their families in personal preparedness for all emergencies. So for me, this sounds very similar to the spies in 1984 in which they mm -hmm. indoctrinated the children to become part of the, I guess, the Hitler Youth Group. Oh, wearing the wrong um, kind of shoes, mommy. Or the, I guess, the League of German Girls is what they called it. Uh, so when, again, whenever you add government to your affairs, to your organization, that's where it kind of goes to, you know. So... Uh, that's something to be wary of, you know, if you're also involved in these particular Girl Scouts um, organizations. I was a Boy Scout once for about a couple months until, um, no, I actually enjoyed it, but I guess uh, for other reasons, father got me out. But it's, uh, I still have the uniform too, which is the handle for my email address, Renegade Boy Scout. Um, my brother was in the Boy Scouts for a while, which was really difficult since he had type 1 diabetes, but uh, he learned a lot of his alpha male misogyny from them i'm sorry to say it might have been a bad scout master or something but <laughs> yeah. yeah it i wouldn't describe it as a healthy or good scene the experience he had hmm. some other advocates for this are Arne Duncan, U.S. Secretary of Education. Of course, he supports subsidizing a lot of the student loans that increases the tuition rates. Of course, if the government guarantees subsidizations of these loans, that means that the uh, schools, the universities can't afford, well, they can increase their, their prices and they know they can't go down because government subsidized the cost of that. So if you want to talk about why tuition rate is uh, so, so, so costly, you can point out one of these guys uh, who supports this uh, initiative. His name is Arne Duncan, U.S. Secretary of Education. And the other supporter is Condoleezza Rice. So again, talk about bossy. You know, there's a list of bossy people who support this initiative. So it's kind of contradictory, kind of hypocritical, especially Condoleezza Rice and her support in invading uh, Iraq, right? And, and her support and like there's evidence of weapons of mass destruction. We have to kick out Saddam Hussein. It's like, and you find out there is nothing there to begin with. There's no weapons of mass destruction. Just uh, a lot more destruction that the United States led in their own way and murdering millions of people. Uh, d destroying generations and you know that I would say would be bossy and of course you have your pop stars Beyonce yeah her uh, tagline being you know I'm not bossy I'm the boss well good bosses don't ban things arbitrarily yeah <laughs> no potted plants on your desk you know no photos of your family and if you want to look at an example of um, political privilege status privilege you look at Beyonce there was a while ago where she was able to have a license to freely travel to Cuba and of course the exception for her because she is above everyone else above the taxpayers she's in a different political class altogether and it's to promote the pop culture and arts so you can't go to Cuba because it's illegal it's criminal uh, but the US government can decide who can and cannot right if you're not uh, within that political connection that upper class then then uh, sorry tough luck you know try to go over there and they'll you know throw you into a cage if they find you so a lot of interesting list of supporters there for uh, this initiative that in and of itself would seem kind of bossy. Um, Not so, that Jane Lynch hasn't made a career of being the bossy character type, but yes. Yeah. I mean, if, if you want to teach children to be assertive, to, to help um, gain that independence, you know, in the last place, again, you want to send them to it are public school settings. But that's not what they teach. And they don't teach you entrepreneur skills. They don't teach you how to negotiate, how to, how to have contracts. They don't teach you how to how to interact with other people in, in a setting that's conducive and voluntary, right? The whole env environment itself is involuntary. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can go about this and trying to make them be afraid of certain words. Um, that's not, I mean, you're going to run into mean people. You're going to run into assholes out there, and that's, that's inevitable. And trying to tell them that certain words just don't exist anymore. I mean, when they grow up, when they fly in the nest, when they go out there in their own lives, they're going to experience that that there are still sociopaths out there and that unfortunately their parents didn't provide them the means of how to protect themselves to defend themselves from such um, I guess verbose attacks uh, so I mean if you want to help them teach them uh, how to respond to those I teach them that uh, don't let strangers have that kind of effect on your emotions don't let them have that power over you all right there's just words they're just in the air you know find ways to teach them to how to respond appropriately um, to express themselves 
uh, especially at a young age, you know, to be able to say how you feel and, um, and to negotiate with your parents. I guess in the parent-child relationship that the parents sometimes will say, you know, it's like, especially for, for boys, you know, you're not supposed to feel a certain way. You have to man up. You have to tough up. Um, and so for girls, I mean, I'm not quite sure exactly in the area. I mean, that's, for my sister, that's not the way we raise her. Um, we raise her to be a sure, to be proactive. That uh, don't worry, we, we have your back. You can say anything you want to say. You'd be, you know, we'll never get in trouble for being for being you. You know, be out there, experience. But no, we always have your back. Um, and that there's no one, you should never give anyone that kind of power over your life, especially to make you feel bad. But again, let's ex explore the areas of um, why they, if they do feel bad, you know, try to teach them empathy, uh, try to teach them how to negotiate and navigate this world instead of being afraid of words, afraid of the word bossy. Um, and some people don't want to be leaders. Some people want to be doers, you know, some people want to work in a, you know, semi-democratic group situation, you know, ooh, I use the D word. But, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a question of always having to, you know, follow. To the credit of this article, there was a nice little blurb about the, you know, at the end of the band bossy spiel about how, oh, yes, guys can be stay-at-home moms, etc., etc. But, you know, we're not, we're not all built for that. Some of us want to, you know, be making or be programming, you know, and we shouldn't be harped upon because we want to think about the question longer or, you know, think it's not as simple as the answer that's given to us in the textbook. I mean, this has been a great flashback to my grade school days, if nothing else, you know, was I one of those girls and why was I one of those girls? I was painfully introverted, but I don't think I was devoid of thought, you know. Yeah. Okay. Rambly, rambly. Yeah, no, no, but nobody <laughs> wants to be, I mean, not everyone wants to be a manager and take those long extra hours and work weekends. Right, some people like the, the 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 regular time schedule shifts that they have, and that's enough for them. You know, that's, that's some their people want to work three jobs in case one goes under. Yeah. that's what I'm playing right now. <laughs> yeah. I have a female boss, and she's wonderful. She always approaches things from the you know the the wordage of you know we need to get this done, or I need you to help me with this because you know it's yeah, and she's you know very empowered, you know, and very diplomatic at the same time. Right. There are other ways to take leadership initiatives and stuff like that without being, I guess, appearing bossy, right? Um, but I guess that's, uh, I guess, more of a conversation from another time that we could probably dispel at some point to to talk about how to um, take initiative. Because that is a problem, and I, I found uh, a lot around here. People are, have find it difficult to assert themselves, uh, to say no, to, to say how they feel, to be honest with themselves. Um, instead, they're led away with a lot of people who feel that they know how best to, I guess, to to control you, how best your life should be run. Um, and for the most part, that's what uh, tax payers are. You know, they, they don't uh, assert themselves and say, no, this is my property. Uh, but we'll get there one day. <laughs> We're working on it here sure in Richmond. Boss. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, remember, telling people that the word uh, bossy, try, trying to ban bossy itself, it's kind of bossy, right? So, so well to wrap said. up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you for enjoying this video. Please subscribe. Please like. Please share with your friends as well. And uh, thank you so much for your support. Please teach your daughters lots of words and your sons too. Absolutely. So with that, see you guys at the victory party. Cal Maloney oh. signing off. <laughs> <laughs> <Salute>. <laughs> <Come by. laughs> More drinking. Yeah. Ciao.